Hi again, everyone, and welcome to Badger Breakdown. I'm Mike Lucas from UWBadgers.com. Joining me is the voice of the Badgers, Matt LePay. This has been kind of an inhale, exhale, deep breaths type of week, has it not? Yeah, it has, and I think it's, it's a perspective. You kind of take a step back. We've, we've seen this before. It's been a while. It's been a while since they've not started 2-0, but we've seen this program go through bumps. Does it come out of it every year? No, but there are a lot of instances where the program has, and it's two games into the year, so let's kind of see how this plays through. I guess what was a little bit startling for everyone who has followed Badger football is the inability to move the chains on the ground. We, we have seen teams struggle offensively, but really not to that degree in, in any recent memory. And that, I think, is the source of more frustration than anything else. Oh, sure. Let's, let's face it, this offense has put up some record numbers here in the last few years. It just seems like one year trump, trumps the, the previous year, uh, and they've had balance offensively, too. Maybe that's one of the hidden things here, Mike, in that they've had, you've had Aberderis, you've had Nick Toon. And you've had other combinations. And right now, especially when Jared went down in the second quarter, you had a very young wide receiving core that as an opposing defense, you can really kind of funnel in on the running game. And it's been it's been a tough go. I mean, Monte Ball or James White, they've had situations where maybe they could have done some things better in their own right. Or, or, or maybe there have been times just haven't been blocked that well either. And it's not just the offensive line. There are other, other factors involved. But, in a phase right now, it's been a while since Badger fans have seen this. And it's back to business right behind us here at Camp Randall Stadium leading up to Saturday night's game against Utah State. But obviously, nationally, people are wondering about the dismissal of Mike Marcus and the promotion of Bart Miller. It, it's unusual here. It's not. It's unusual across the country, but it, it has happened before across the country. In fact, earlier this year, it happened with a coordinator at, a, at another institution. But we haven't seen it around here. But the way the guys are talking in the first practice after the move, a different voice, however you want to put it, but it sounded like it was a pretty good practice to hear them talk about it, to hear Brett talk about it. We'll find out on Saturday. We'll get some ideas and then more and more probably in the ensuing weeks. But as Brett said, if, if he's not comfortable with something, if something doesn't seem like the right fit and you think you may need to make a change, then make it. Don't let it linger. And, and that's, that's what he did. He, as he said, he lets everybody else worry about how it's perceived, he's got to do what he thinks is best. Well, some of the players were talking about it yesterday after practice and that they have 10 games guaranteed. That's the guarantee. So there's a lot of season left and you want to make sure you address whatever problems you may have and then move on. Which is going to be interesting this week because Utah State is coming in here on a high. They're Having a good beat, team. Yeah, they are. They, they beat Utah last week. Uh, they have played BCS teams to the wire at Auburn. Uh, they played Oklahoma here very well in the, in the last couple of years. The Auburn game, they probably should have won. They come in with a lot of confidence, and they come in, Mike, with a very aggressive defense that last week was blitzing from all angles. So this is going to be uh, quite the test, regardless of the situation with Wisconsin, but maybe especially so now. And it's almost a worst-case scenario. You come back home, people have raised a lot of questions about how you started the season and you face a dual-threat quarterback. And there's nothing more frustrating than finding out that the quarterback can also run when he gets on the edge of the defense. And he's really Chucky Keaton is who we're referring to, and he's a good decision-maker. Yes, he, he was is. the last starting quarterback last year in major college football to throw an interception. He's hit on 77% of his throws so far this year. He can spray the ball around. They do a little bit of everything on offense. They vary the speed. You can see them huddle up, take their time, and you can see them at unpredictable moments seemingly go into a hurry, no huddle, but hurry type of offense and with a quarterback who they really trust. So many other things last week overshadowed the play of the defense, and rightly so. I understand it. I get it. But th that was one of the more promising elements to the loss at Oregon State. I thought with the exception of, of maybe one bust and one long series, Wisconsin defensively played the type of defense that they're going to need to play the rest of the year. Yeah, they did. I thought early in the game you saw the corners give space to, to the Oregon State receivers. It was maybe a little bit bend but don't break, but they didn't break. It was 3 nothing at the half. They gave up the touchdown early in the third quarter. But as the second half went on, when they had to get stops, they got stops. And, We'll never know uh, how it would have transpired had the call on the onside kick not been overturned, but you had to think that that offense, the last couple of possessions, especially their last possession, had a little something going. But the defense kept them in the ball game to the very end. Maybe it's a different way of looking at things, but after that loss, Wisconsin dropped out of the top 25 for the first time in four years. It's been brought up in the past that Wisconsin has always 
thrived or flourished when the underdog, well, the yeah. Badgers got that yeah. chip back on their shoulder. They are, and they are, they're still top 25 in the coaches, but in the AP poll, they did drop out, but they're top 25 in the coaches. But you're right, the questions are there again, and we've both been around long enough to know that Wisconsin, that underdog role has tended to be a good thing. And even though I think people are still expecting Wisconsin to win on Saturday, they're thinking, okay, well, what's going on here? They're probably, these guys, they're not dumb. They know that there are some doubters out there, so here's a chance to start proving them wrong. And I've got to believe, too, that every one of these players and all the coaches can't wait for Saturday. They need to get back on the field to cleanse themselves. They do, and some of them have said, have said that very thing. And I, they couldn't wait to get back on the field on Tuesday. You know, they, you know, they go through the video session, which was probably not a treat for those guys. Uh, but to get back on the field Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, go through the process, but, yeah, they – they, they sound a little ticked off, just the, the, few, the players they're that mad. we've had a chance to talk to. They, they believe they're better than what they've shown so far. The beauty of it is, as you mentioned, they have 10 games, at least 10 games, to prove that they're better. And what better way to get back on track than under the lights here at Camp Randall Stadium? It's supposed to be a beautiful night. Uh, you hope that the crowd gets behind them here. And this is a, it's another one of those games, Mike, that's going to be pretty tough. It's not a conference schedule. A little bit tougher than I think a lot we of found that thought. out. All the games are going to be tough yes, this sir. year. But that adds to the intrigue. For Matt LePay, I'm Mike Lucas. Thanks for watching UWBadgers.com.